Do you want to see like an artist and not have to rely on using lines before you paint? In this video, I'll explain how direct watercolour will make you a better and faster artist. G'day everyone, welcome back to my channel. I'm Kim and today I want to take you on a quick tutorial of how to paint directly without any lines. We're going to paint this male red-capped parrot, which is a parrot that is found here in the southwestern corner of Western Australia. It's a technique called direct watercolour that was coined by Mark Taro Holmes, an urban sketcher. Essentially, you draw directly on the paper with paint, bypassing the underlying sketch, whether that's in pencil or pen. So why would you do this? Isn't the drawing supposed to be a scaffold for the painting? The skeleton upon which you build and thereby avoid making perspective and anatomical mistakes? It's the planning phase, so why would you throw that out and risk a failed painting? It also trains your eyes to see shapes like an artist does. This means you can identify parts of an image that are the same value or colour, rather than just be restricted by outlines. As a result, your paintings will become more accurate, and you'll fall less often into the trap of drawing what you think is in front of you, instead of what you actually see. I chose this red-capped parrot for two reasons. Firstly, I'd seen one on my recent walk, and I wanted to add it into my journal and secondly, because it's ideal for breaking into colour-based shapes for this technique. I think parrots are an excellent subject for practising identifying shapes by colour because of their bright contrasting plumage. So, I've separated this parrot into eight shapes based on the red cap and lower abdomen, yellow cheek and a tiny part under the wing, the blue breast and wingtips, and finally two green patches for the back and tail. We'll draw each colour piece separately, combining them just like a puzzle. The key here is to keep the number of puzzle pieces to a minimum, so that it doesn't get complicated. You can add detail at the end. Start with a light wash, and with the lightest colours, like yellow, first. This way, you can adjust with another layer if needed. The yellow cheek is like a rounded, curved triangle. Even though there is another yellow section, we'll do that later, so that it's in the correct position because if you guess now where it might be, that could lead to a very squat or stretched parrot. Make sure that section is dry before you move on to an adjacent one, otherwise the paint can flow into unwanted areas. Of course, if you like this effect, then don't worry about letting it dry first, but for this painting, my goal is to keep each colour shape separate. After the yellow cheek, I move on to the green back and wing. There's a thin sliver at the back of the head, next to the yellow cheek. I sketch the shape by paying attention to the angles, and the starting and end points relative to the other shapes. Once it's filled in, I leave a space for the blue wingtips and create a long, thin triangle for the tail, with the angle following on from the back. While the tail's still wet, I add in blue at the bottom tip so that the paint gradually changes colour from green to blue in a soft way. Now we can slot the yellow lower abdomen so that it interlocks next to the base of the tail. In this case, I don't mind if the shape's a little bit bigger than it needs to be, because yellow is easy to cover up with a darker colour. While 
While that dries, I add the red cap, leaving space for the eye and beak, then move down to add the red in the lower abdomen as well. I noticed here that the green wing shape needs to be expanded a bit so that the yellow is against it without a gap. I fixed that by adding another layer of green and also add a touch of blue to the wing edge while that's wet. As it's drying, I use a dry brush and lift some paint where the shoulder is so that it's a little bit lighter there. Once all the shapes have dried, I can go back and add additional layers to adjust the color vibrancy and some shadow to give it 3D form. Now the blue breast and wingtips can be added and this is where it really feels like you're fitting together puzzle pieces and can see it coming together. I finally add the feet and branch, and also around the eye and the edges of the beak with a little bit of diluted black. The final part is what helps bring this piece together, and that's adding pen and details. I don't outline everything, and I only make a few marks here and there to suggest the feather shapes, since that's enough to make it recognisable.
I think using this technique was very fun despite the fear of creating something without an underlying drawing. You can also apply this technique with landscapes and urban scenes. It's honestly a lot easier than it seems and you might be surprised just as I was at how well it comes together. Let me know how you go in the comments or if you've got any questions. If you liked this, you might be interested in my tutorial on how to paint a feather from a red-tailed black cock too. Thanks for watching and see you in the next video.